This is principlesofaccounting.com, chapter 7 on accounts receivable. In this module, we will look at notes receivable and interest charges thereon. We'll also consider how receivables, accounts receivable, might be converted to notes receivable. So that first requires us to consider the need to monitor and manage accounts receivable. First, companies must try to avoid bad debts by carefully monitoring their credit policies. We, we, we should consider the credit history of our customers. We might secure a payment in advance. We might even receive a guarantee from a third party or a line of credit at a bank that ensures or assures payment of the amounts that are due. It's very important for a company to carefully monitor and manage their accounts receivable as liquidity can be adversely impacted if receivables are not collected in a timely manner. Therefore, certain ratios have been developed, such as the accounts receivable turnover ratio, which measures how many times a firm's receivables are converted to cash during the year. Very simply, it's net credit sales divided by average net accounts receivable for the period. A related ratio is days outstanding. It measures how many days sales are carried in the receivables category, and it is 365 days divided by the accounts receivable turnover ratio from up above. We also want to consider or compare our numbers to discern trends against industry competitors as well as against prior years. They can provide an early warning, potential problems in receivables management, and rising bad debt risks. If the receivables collection period is longer than the norm or is growing in length, it may suggest uh, growing credit problems for a particular company. Now, sometimes a company will, when they're having trouble collecting a receivable or needing to formalize a receivable, they'll actually have the customer exchange the informal account receivable for a formal note receivable, which is a written promise from a client or customer to pay a definite amount of money on a specific future date, perhaps with interest. Their notes are formal, they're enforceable, they may even become negotiable. Certain terminology related to, to notes, the maker is the party promising to make payment under the note. The payee is the party to whom payment will be made. The principal is the stated amount of the note. The maturity date is the date on which the note is due. And finally, interest is the charge for the use of the money. It's usually reflected as principal times rate times time. To look at an example, assume a $1,000 60-day note bearing interest at 12%. The interest for that 60-day period would be $20. That's $1,000 principal times 12% rate times, and I'm using a 360-day year assumption, so times 60 days outstanding divided by 360 days. So the product of that multiplication is $20, the amount of interest. Interest might be calculated on a 360-day or a 365-day year. The 360-day is simpler for calculation purposes, typically used in textbook illustrations, may be used in, in business applications as well, as well. Tends to benefit the lender or the payee of the note a bit since you're assuming the interest accrues at a faster rate with a 360-day year. Okay, assume that $10,000 of merchandise is sold on account to Hewlett. Hewlett requests more time to pay and agrees to give a formal three-month note bearing interest at 12% per year. So at the time the account receivable is exchanged for the note receivable, we're debiting notes receivable and crediting account receivable $10,000. That, of course, increases the one asset, note receivable, and removes the account receivable, the other asset, from the books. When the note matures, the collection is recorded. We debit cash, $10,300. We credit the principal amount of the note receivable, 10000 The difference is recorded as interest income. We should be able to verify that $300 amount of interest, $10,000 principal times 12% times 90 over 360 days or one-fourth of a year. So that's 3% or $300 net of interest. Now, if Hewlett refused to pay at maturity, the note is said to be dishonored. We're going to go after Hewlett and try to collect the note. So now I'm coming back in and debiting accounts receivable $10,300. i will remove the note receivable that's been dishonored from the books. I'll go ahead and record the interest income. I'm still expecting to collect that. Uh, if I'm in doubt about that, I might follow an alternative accounting path. But I'm assuming here we're still going to be able to find Hewlett and collect the money that's due to us. Now, like many other transactions, notes receivable may give rise to adjusting entries for accrued interest. 
The note we previously looked at, the $10,000 note, it came into existence on June 1. Assume we have a June 30 year end. So in this particular case, we're going to record interest for one month at the end of our year or at the end of our month, June 30th. That's $100 of interest. We'll debit to interest receivable and credit interest income to reflect accrued interest income and the related receivable associated with that. When payment actually occurs on August 31, we'll be debiting cash, $10,300 recording the collection of the $10,000 note, recording collection of the $100 of interest receivable, and recording the other $200 as interest income for the month of July and August. And so this entry uh, that demonstrates the final collection of the note closes our consideration of the material in this particular chapter.